What is up everybody, my name is Andrew and welcome back to Space Engineers Survival 2024. This is episode number seven and last episode we did this major expansion to our base, adding this entire hallway right here and adding this entire room over here as well. All of it pressurized, well not quite built up, but all of it pressurized, all of it looking good. Off camera I added a little bit of lighting and one more vent for this area right here so it's looking a lot better. Um, last episode I teased that we'd be doing auto mining in this episode using the PAM auto miner script and we are going to be doing that I had a little bit of a, a mess around with it um, on my own world and I think I understand how it works so this episode we're going to be getting some auto mining set up for some of our ores so that we can finally end our ore problems. There are of course a couple more things I'd love to do around the base if we end up having time. Getting a med bay or a cargo room set up would be nice and of course increasing the defenses would always be nice as well. But this episode is dedicated pretty much solely to auto mining and getting that set up. So let's go ahead and head outside. Uh, the idea here is that I would like to, uh, you guys might remember we have the PLA military installation over there that we conquered. I'd like to turn that into an outpost uh, for our uh, mining operations. So pretty much all of the ore areas around the outpost would be used for um, for collecting ores using the strip mining technique that Pam uses. Our little auto miners would essentially bring all the ores over there, it would all get refined, and then we'd have one kind of mule ship that would bring it all the way back to our base right here. I don't know if we're gonna get all of that done in this episode, but I'd like to at least try to see if we can. And then if we have any more time, we'll maybe do a little bit of uh, welding up of this stuff. We'll maybe do a little bit more work on the solar panels, which I did change a slight bit, by the way. You'll notice that we have these curved edge, or these, uh, these angled edges right here instead of the one straight um, solar panel thing. I thought it looked a little bit better when I was doing the thumbnail and so I added those in instead and I think that's how we're going to do the design for the other ones also. So, um, but anyway, yeah, we'll weld that stuff up if we get time. Um, right now we need to head over there. So let's get in our little truck and head over in that direction. Oh, looks like we have a ward of Lothian that is going to fly directly over our, it, the old parallax base. Hopefully it won't decide to attack. But um, but yeah, okay, let's grab a couple materials and head over to the military installation base over there to see what we want to do. Okay, we're well on our way and we're bringing the truck as well, the Mocha Mobile, because it has the little drone, the Sprite drone. Oh my god, that's a cool view of the ward of Lothian over there. Um, it's got the Sprite drone on it, and we're going to be using the Sprite drone to scout out some new ore deposits that we can use for strip mining. So that's that's why we're bringing this guy, and I think it's going to come in handy. This is the first deployment of the uh, Mocha Mobile, and I think that is going to be cool. We actually never changed the colors of some of these things that we added on uh, last episode after the Reaver destroyed them, but it's fine. No one is judging, right guys? Right guys? You know, it actually occurred to me that I probably need to make sure these are all off there. Uh, that's probably why we're flying a little bit. It felt like we were hovery, a little bit hovery with this thing, and it's probably because the Sprite Drone's thrusters were on. All right, here we are at the former Parallax base. We're gonna go ahead and land in here if we can. I don't know, we might be too big for this, but we'll soon find out. Nope, we're good, okay, I kind of trusted it. Let's go ahead and park right here. There we go, handbrake is on, and okay, everything's looking good. We are here, and uh, this base is in a little bit need of repair, I think. It's got the uh, some fire still going right there, um, but all we really care about is this refinery, which we're going to use, and we're definitely going to expand as well to have more refineries eventually. So the way I'm imagining this is that this outpost right here is going to be a refining outpost and it's then going to ferry things back to the main base over there. We're going to have a lot of landing pads for different ships which are going to drop off their materials uh, once they're full and go back to mining all autonomously and it's going to be really cool. Um, so that's going to be fun. We're going to have to create landing pads and we're going to have to create some infrastructure here like uh, like some conveyors to convey all these things together. Like I don't even think this med room is connected right now, so it's pro it would probably be a good idea to get that connected. I would ideally like to keep this in its current position, uh, so what I think we're going to do is we're probably going to connect into here, because this is the easiest connection I think to get to. Um, so yeah, we're going to remove this, we're full on inventory, but I, I can just drop some stuff off here temporarily. Let's put all this stuff back. Oh, actually we have lots of materials from the time we went to, uh, to add things to the um, the Coffini Outpost, so we have lots of stuff on board. Okay, so now that we have that, what we can do is we can use these blocks here. So I'm gonna use a curved one, like that. We're gonna go up right there, then we're gonna come over, like so. Go over this, then I'm gonna use a three-way one right there. We'll turn it around to face this direction. Then I'm gonna go straight again. I think the way we're gonna do this, actually, is we're gonna have two landing pads here. So one right here and one right there. Um, so it'll kind of be like this. 
So if we come out this way, it'd go probably about this big, just very small, not very large here. About this large, I think. And we'll do the same thing on this side as well. Bring this out about that far. And we'll call that a landing pad. We need more stuff. All right, we can remove these middle blocks right here and we can add ourselves some sort of connector. So I'm gonna put something like this. Okay, I think I like this a little bit better. We're actually using the pipes because I think they look kind of cool. And then over here, we uh, I, I put this on the ground floor instead of above. And then I just use the pipe to connect it right there. Now, instead of having just a normal conveyor here, I actually need to change this so that we have little sorters. Uh, so let me go ahead and get those. We're gonna grab a conveyor sorter. And I probably could save some some money here if I were to just use one sorter. Uh, actually, that might not be a bad idea. Just using one sorter right here to pull all the stuff. All right, there we go. We've got it set up. So the sorter is actually over there. We have one sorter for both of these. It's going to pull all, all ores, rather, ores and ice into this area over here. Now we're going to need some pretty hefty storage on here. So we're going to have to set that up somewhere, uh, probably maybe in one of these corners or something. Uh, I don't really want to take down the control tower. I kind of like it. I could definitely fit some storage right here. That wouldn't be that bad. So I could put one right there and then kind of mirror that on the other side. Yeah, I think I might do that, actually. So we'll move you. Uh, I think you're maybe parked. You might also be out of power. I don't know, actually. Yeah, I think this guy is unfortunately out of power. <laughs> yeah, all of its little batteries are are uh, are used. I can push it, though. So that's helpful. Anyway, I think I was able to get it mostly out of the way. So we're going to put that right about here. It's going to take up that amount of space right there. So let's get it maybe put right here. And we're going to do the same thing on this side right here. I'm going to have to remove these guys right there. But that should be fine. Yep, that should be enough space right there. So let's put another one right in that area. Okay, we're going to connect them. Uh, we could connect them through here. I mean, it's not the worst thing if we remove a little bit of the tower. Besides, we're removing some tower, but we're adding more tower. It's going to look even cooler. Okay, so there we go. Those are That's going to be our, our uh, storage solution. And then I might also make another storage solution, like, purely for ice or something, because I feel like we're going to have a lot of it. But uh, honestly, it probably doesn't matter right now. Here, let's do this. Let's remove this right here, and let's instead put a sorter, because I think what we're going to do is we're going to have one of these be for ores. That'll be this one right here. Ores, ice, etc. And this one right here is going to pull all the ingots to this one. So we'll be able to just go in here and see what ingots we have that have been processed. Uh, and then from there, all of our all, all that our mule thing would have to do is connect to here, pull all the ingots, and fly away. So, okay, yeah, we got it. We got it. <laughs> we're doing we're doing things. Okay, last big change, I promise. Uh, this is... I, um, I moved the med bay. Um, it's not my fault, I was just digging down here to uh, to relay the pipes, so to speak, and it fell, <laughs> so I had to replace it. Uh, but on the bright side, I can use this DLC one now, which is nice because it actually has a seal, and you can build stuff around it that will make a pressurized room. So if we want to pressurize, that's going to come in handy. Okay, anyway, that's enough groundwork, I think. We have a nice little landing pad area for two little PAM miners once we get them set up. What are you? <laughs> Parallax Shadow with two arrowheads. Um, yeah, so once we get everything set up, we have the area for it. We're going to need to go back to base and get some materials for this. But before we do that, I want to do some scouting and see if we can find some ore patches. So let's pop into here. Let's press K. Let's go to Remote. We can grab... It uh, should be this one right here. And this should be... Go ahead and control that. This should be our little mini drone, our little sprite drone. So let's press K, make sure that our thrusters are all on. Let's hop down into here and unlock this. I don't know why that turned my ship to recharge. That was a weird thing. Let's unturn my ship to recharge. Go back into here, remote access, grab our sprite drone, and now we should be good to go. Oh, we gotta fly out of the influence of that thing. Um, do we actually have an ore detector on here? Do we not have an ore detector on here, really? <laughs> okay, somehow I forgot to add an ore detector on here, so let me add one right now. It shouldn't be too difficult to build. I'm probably just gonna have to make a trip back to base to get the, uh, the required stuff. Okay, so give me one second. I'm gonna fly back to base, grab the stuff for the ore detector, and be right back. Okay, we were able to get everything, and here is the ore detector right there. Let's hop back into here. Oh man, the Mokomobile looks so empty without the, uh, without the sprite drone on top of it. Okay, let's head into here. Number K again. A number K? What? And uh, Sprite Drone. And let's head out. Okay, so we've got some power left. Is this an ore deposit right here? Because if this is, that would be really convenient for us, I think. Let's get down low. And no, I don't think it is. Because I'm not seeing anything here. Okay, that's, that. that is fine. Let's fly up a little bit. 
And remember the technique for finding ore spots is to look for splotches. So we have a splotch right there of orange. Uh, let's look around also. Anywhere that's close by is going to be convenient for us. So we actually have splotches over there, but that is the Coffini outpost. I don't think I'm going to do some auto mining at the Coffini outpost because the Pam auto miner tends to do strip mining and I don't really want to strip mine our, our outpost area. Let's head over here. We have a, a, an ore splotch over here. So we're going to, we're going to check it out. Let's see what we got. We actually have one right there. Ooh, that's actually a nice one. That is a, that's an open area. Let's check out this one. This is cool, it's very blue. It almost looks like surface magnesium or something. Let's head down here and see what we have. So, so far we've just got ice on the scanners, um, but if we go a little bit lower, it's still more ice and more ice. Am I only finding ice? Our scanners are apparently set to ice. All right, this, this deposit here was a dud, unless there's something a little bit deeper, but this one right here looks promising. Look at all those splotches of orange. That is definitely gonna be something. Maybe some iron would be nice. Maybe some thing. Magnesium, okay, magnesium's good. We need that for our ammo. Let's check it out even further. It looks like we've got some nickel as well. We're always running low on nickel. Uh, and we've got some silicon uh, as well. So I don't know if I can press K and mark this from, because I think this will mark it from my coordinates. Let me see, what did that mark? Oh, no, okay, that did mark it. So I'm gonna call this, uh, okay, Pam, Magnesium, Nickel, Silicon, so that we know where it is. Okay, let's fly up a little bit more. And that's only 1.84 away from there. That's, that's pretty good. Let's check out the other side, because I remember when we initially started the series, we had noticed an area over here that was kind of close to the parallax base. I didn't want to get too close to it because I thought the parallax thing might attack me. And I think it's probably that one right there. So let's head over there and check that one out, see if that's got any um, any good stuff for us. Let's come in for a, uh, a scanning here. And looks like we have some nickel here, but what else? Can I find some iron? That'd be really good if I found like a secondary iron patch. I will say it's a big nickel patch, so if we run out of nickel at the other place, we'll go check this one out, maybe get some from here. But let's look for another one. I really want to find an iron one. I think that'd be really helpful. Oh, this might be one right here. It kind of looks a little bit promising, but it's hard to tell sometimes. I do think this is one though. I see the orange. So let's check it out. See if we got some iron over here, perhaps? A little bit of iron, maybe? A little bit of, a little bit of the FE? Okay, we got some iron. That's good. We found a little bit of iron. Anything else? Can I get, can I get some silicon? Can I get some, can I get some uranium? <laughs> no, we're not going to get uranium, but uh, iron, iron is good. And there's something else down here because I'm still over patches here and I don't see the iron anymore. So there could be another material down here. Yeah, flying over here doesn't look like it's gonna reveal what it is. So we're just gonna have to go with this being an iron patch and we'll find out later what, what else is here. So the iron is for sure over here. This is good to know. Okay, with our remaining power, let's check out one more ore patch if we can find one. I'm looking for, okay, here's one on the mountain here. And actually that might be perfect if there's one. Wait, is that actually? Yeah, I think that's one, but if it's on a mountain, that's good because Pam tends to like do some strip mining. So strip mining is made a little bit easier on a mountain like this. So let's check out what we have. No, I don't think this is one. I think this is one of those deceptive ones that looks like one, but is not actually one. Oh, okay. There's one actually right there on the mountain next to me. So let's head over to that one and see what we have over there. And that'll be the last one that we search for today. Although as Pam mines these up, we'll probably have to find more eventually. So let's check out this one right here and see what we've got. What do we have over there? Oh, we have another base, a, a, an Incon DBS lookout tower. It looks like that's going to be our next attack uh, opportunity right there. It's kind of far from the from the main base, but that's good to see. So we can we have some independent contractors that we can go uh, fight. Now, meanwhile, over here, we have another magnesium silicon. Is there nickel as well? Um, I think Space Engineers tends to spawn the same things together. So uh, we might have some nickel also. OK, we marked it down and let's head on back to our uh, military installation over there so that we can get this thing charging. It doesn't have that much power left, but it was nice to do a little bit of exploring and find a couple more ore patches that we can use for our auto mining. I think the iron's probably going to be the first one we set up. Um, or maybe we'll set up two. Yeah, let's set up two in this episode because it's not that much harder to set up a second one than it is to set up one. So let's, uh, let's head back to the military installation, get things welded up, and then we'll start on building the ships because that's, that's an important part of mining. You need the mining ships. So let's head on back. And this should be a pretty easy connection. There we go. Okay, I think it's number eight and then number nine to set this to recharge. I'm going to go in here and set our thrusters to off as well so that it's not trying to like lift the ship. 
let's head on back to the base. I'm going to leave the truck right here, um, which I think should be fine. How's your power doing? Uh, you have 16 hours of power? Okay, you'll be good. Um, we actually do need the garage, so we'll leave the truck there, head on back to the base, and we're going to use the garage for our building so that we don't have to worry about suit power too much. And here we are. Let's close it so that we can get out of the cold. It's quite chilly out there. Um, that'll close eventually, don't worry. It just takes, yeah, it just takes a second to realize that it wants to close. But anyway, we're going to be building ships today. So we're going to be building two, probably starting with one and then building the second one afterwards. And we're going to be building mining ships as well. So let's start by getting a couple of, of uh, components on us. In fact, we have some already, so we don't need to do that. Um, in that case, I will be starting with a landing gear. So I always start with the landing gear when I'm building a ship, plop one down right there. We're not going to weld it up, but we're just going to use it there for support. And then we're going to be building our ship. So these are going to be mining ships, so they're going to need a lot of thrust, but we are also on Europa, so maybe not as much thrust as I think. Um, here's what we'll start with. We know we have a connector on the bottom, so we can start with that. Okay, we'll toss our connector on like that. And next we're gonna want some storage. We can probably go quite a bit of storage for this ship. I don't know if I wanna go with a large thing, although we could probably manage it. But I think I wanna go with mediums at the start because this thing is kind of automated. It doesn't really matter if it carries a lot of capacity. It'll just go back to base, drop it off and bring it back. You know, it's it's a free workhorse. We, we don't have to worry too much about thrust. Since this is down here, here's the thing. Since it's a mining ship, we don't actually need to make sure that the large connections line up. So we can use a medium and kind of hook it up like this. Um, maybe I want to do put some blocks in the middle like that. And they might not stay there, but for now, we're going to put them there. And I'm going to throw our mediums kind of like so. And then we're going to have our drills on the front of that. So it's going to be a two cargo container or maybe a four. Now, I'd rather I'd rather it actually be a little bit skinnier than uh, than bigger come to think of it. We'll throw our battery on the back just like that. In this middle area, I'm probably gonna end up putting a couple of upward facing thrusters, maybe three or maybe two. On the back, I think I'm gonna stick my larger or my uh, my downward facing thrusters and we might go for, how do we go large thrusters though? We could go large thrusters, but then again, we're on Europa, so we probably don't need them. In that case, we will do it like this. We're gonna go ahead and stick our drills right there and right there. We're gonna connect them with a uh, one of these blocks right here. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and use a camera because we are in fact gonna make this an automated ship uh, without a cockpit. And what else am I missing? I'm missing a gyro. So let's put a gyro on maybe right, uh, wherever I can fit one really. I can put some stuff on the back. So maybe we'll put the gyro on the back right there. We are definitely going to want some left-right thrusters, so let's go ahead and put those on as well. So, uh, one facing the left and one facing the right. Perfect. And I believe the only thing we're missing is forward-backward, so let's put some of those on also. Actually, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this up just a tiny bit because I think I, there's a better way for me to do this. Instead of putting the drills like it was there, I'm going to put them like this. One right there, one right here, and one right here. So we have three drills instead of two. And I think that's going to help us out a little bit in terms of our profile of the ship. In general, when you're mining, if you're doing a left click, uh, left click mine, you're going to want your drills to kind of cover the profile of your ship. Otherwise, things that are sticking out are going to, you know, tag on to the, the side of the wall. So it's important to cover the profile if you're doing a miner like this. Okay, with the drills positioned a little bit higher, I should be able to add a couple of thrusters facing forward like so, and then I should be able to add a couple ones facing backwards like this. Um, and maybe in fact I'll do, well, I'll do, I'll do two facing backwards just like I did facing forwards. And that right there should be a fully functioning ship. Now let's weld it up and then we'll add a couple more things that are specific for PAM Auto Miner. So let's get this stuff all welded. I should be able to just turn this on. That should handle a little bit of it. It's not going to handle that much of it because it's not positioned properly, but it'll at least save us a little bit of time, right? Um, anything that's not welded I or anything that we don't have, I'm going to need to build up, like motors. We're going to need a lot of motors. As we're building up stuff for this, it looks like we are actually out of nickel, so I'm going to go on a little bit of a nickel expedition. Let's head out the front door, I think. Uh, we'll go ahead and use this. And wait, is that where the... Oh, wait. Wait, we have two lookout towers. Hang on. I thought we only discovered one, but it looks like we've discovered a second Incon lookout tower right there. Maybe like communicating with that one is why we found it. I don't know. That's awfully close to that tower over there. But anyway, we need to go grab some nickel. And I believe the only nickel we have is at the Coffini Outpost. So let's go. Oh, Coffini Outpost, you're looking really cool over here. 
We need to do some work on the Coffini Outpost, but it's a little bit out of scope for this episode. We'll have to make a dedicated episode for getting this Coffini Outpost built up. It's looking neat though, I really like it. Let's head down over here in the nickel hole and find some nickel that we left behind last time. Couldn't use the truck to grab these ores because unfortunately uh, the truck is over at the other base. But once we get Pam set up, we shouldn't have nickel problems anymore. Hopefully, that's the, that's the plan. Welcome back from our mining expedition. Close that, open this, uh, and let's get back to work. I'm wondering if I should actually uh, build the second one like right next to this wall I'm building this one, because we have the space and we are gonna build two. So I might as well make it just like a copy of it right next to it, because why not? Ah, <laughs> I was building the second one and I think I got into like, wait, what did I even get into? I, I don't, wait, what, what even happened actually? Hang on, I think I need to do some some criminal investigation. What did I, oh, I thought it was a thruster that got me, but no, I actually just stood on a uh, a welder. Yeah, that, that, that'll do it, I think. Okay, I've just about crafted a copy of this. It's a little bit different. There's some slight differences on it. Uh, it's using a different um, type, of, type of thruster for one, but uh, yeah, it's a little crammed in here. Um, we need to get this stuff welded up, and I think a lot of the stuff has finished welding as well, so. Let's, or has finished producing, so let's get some of this stuff done. Okay, there's the battery, looking good. And there's one of the gyros as well. There's one, number two, both facing different directions, perfect. There's our drills, nice to see them. Another cargo container in right there, little connector pieces. Oh no, we're finally out of iron. <laughs> All right, fine. One very quick iron trip that we can get with our with our drill because after this we're going to have our iron thing set up and we're not going to have to go get any more iron with our with our hand. Hopefully, if it works, we'll see. One more jetpack of iron it is. Let's head on down the stairs and we're going to get some of this stuff. Turn the light on. And let's see if we can get some good iron. No ice, just iron. Do I actually have any here? No, I don't have any in here. I do have some materials though. Okay, we're full on that stuff. Let's actually throw the ice in here and grab a little bit more iron so we can bring home a pure set of iron. All right, let's set up and get this stuff back into the uh, the refinery. Ah, uh, base sweet base, there we go. Iron is there and it's not that much, but it should get us to where we need to go with getting at least this ship up and running. It should probably get both of them up and running now that I think about it. Because all we need to do is, is get this stuff produced. All right, this ship is looking pretty good. Everything is welded. There are just a couple things that I need to add that are PAM specific. So the first thing is going to be a programmable block. We're going to need one of those somewhere on here. So let's go ahead and just stick one somewhere. I'll go ahead and stick it right there. I think that'll be pretty good. Then we're going to need a sensor. So let's get a sensor somewhere. It needs to be pointing in the direction that we're going to be drilling. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it up there. And then finally, we're going to need an LCD and that's mostly for ease of use. I'm going to go ahead and stick an LCD right here, I think. And I think that should be facing the right way. Uh, it just needs to be visible by this camera so that I can, well, you, you'll see why. Let me go ahead and weld all this stuff up and we'll get this going. There we go. Now looking at this, I think we have everything. So let's head over in here. And what I need to do is I need to go to my sensor and I need to add the words uh, Pam to the end of it, just like that inside these brackets. And I need to do the same thing for our LCD. I just need to add uh, bracket P-A-M to the end of that, just like that. And then finally in our programmable block, I can go in here and I can set this. I go to edit right here, browse scripts. And this is one that all, all the scripts that are going to appear here are the ones that I have in my uh, workshop. Let's go ahead and re reload that. It's, it's having a little bit of trouble there. Oh, Steam is actually offline. Hang on. What? <laughs> That's... That's not, <laughs> what timing is that? <laughs> Steam has been online all day and it just goes offline right when I need to access the workshop script. That's unfortunate. We're gonna save that for later. We'll, we'll add the script in in a second. I'm gonna get this one welded up and then we'll come back to that. How about that? So let's get this one welded up as well. I need a motor. Holding out for a motor cause I just need a motor. Someone give me a motor. I really need a motor cause motors is what I need. All right, Steam is still offline, but I can at least bring this over to the area. So let me go ahead and close this or open this door rather. I'm gonna bring this ship over to the, uh, the outpost over there and we're gonna get it in position. Now it's missing two thrusters. So actually, let me go ahead and remove two from here. I'm gonna use them. There we go. Remove two from there. I'm gonna use them on this guy. 
I'll go ahead and remove this as well so that I can fly. I'm gonna press K, go into remote access, grab our small grid right there, and that should be him. Camera, view, and so from the camera, yes, okay, so that, that LCD is actually upside down, I'm gonna have to change that, but I can at least see it. Okay, let's fly it out here so it's got a little bit of open space. And from there, I can stick on the two thrusters that it's missing, which are on this side right here. There's one, there is two, and let me flip this upside down. There we go, that actually gives me a pretty nice place to sit as well. If I press K, go into remote access, I should be able to control this. And it is right side up now. There's something that's actually gonna display on there, but it's not right now because I don't have the script set up because Steam's offline and I can't set it up. All right, let's go ahead and bring this over to our military installation here and dock it. It is kind of low on power and I'd like to get it full before we get this. And once Steam comes back on the online, I will be able to continue and add the, uh, the script and stuff like that. But um, we'll have to wait around for that. At least we can get this guy stationed and ready. All right, here we are. Everything's coming into view and we're gonna go ahead and try and land at this little place right here. So let's get into position, go forward a little bit and then down maybe here, I'm guessing. Here, let's pop out of, uh, of remote here and let's see how close we are. Okay, we're not that close. <laughs> let's go back into remote, back it up just a little bit and down, perfect. We'll press number eight to connect right there. Press number nine to switch to recharge mode. And we now have our first of our little PAM miners at the base. Uh, now, once the script comes online, I will add the script to this and we'll get this stuff set up, but we are gonna have to wait around for Steam to come back online. So we're gonna do that and I'll be back once it's loaded. All right, finally, I just checked and it looks like Steam is back online. So if we go into our script right here and click edit, we should now see in the browse scripts area when we refresh. Yes, okay, so we now have Pam uh, Path Auto Miner right here. If we double click that, that'll bring it into our, our code here. We can check code, but you know, it's fine. And then we can hit okay right there. Now, uh, since I set this stuff up and I gave our sensor the Pam thing and I gave this the Pam thing, these are gonna start I think maybe I have to run the script. I actually don't know. Let me uh, let me run. Maybe maybe that doesn't matter. I think it's working. Maybe I need to be in control. Let me let me show you this real quick. Okay, when I go into remote and control and then look through the camera, let me look at my LCD. I think I need to rename it again. LCD two. Let's add Pam to that. There we go. And then it should pick it up, and we should see it start to show us some stuff any second now. Yes, okay, so it's actually showing us the PAM stuff there. Okay, so this is essentially the UI for PAM. Uh, this is how you control what it does right there on that little screen. Um, and the way you control what you see there is you press G and you add a programmable block down here with a run command and you set the argument to down. Uh, sorry, down right there. We'll set another one to the left of that with the argument up. And finally, we'll set another one right there with the argument apply. Okay, so now you'll see when I click my uh, my number one and number two, they're actually going down and up. So this is how you control Pam. Huge thanks to Lunar Colony for his video on this. This was very helpful in understanding how this works. Um, but yeah, one and two are up and down, and then number three would be uh, click OK. So essentially the way we're gonna do this, and we're not gonna do it quite yet, but we're gonna go to record path and set home, and we're gonna do that. We're basically gonna record a path to the ore. Then we're gonna set up a mining job, which is gonna tell it how to actually do the mining. And finally, we're gonna tell it to start, and it's gonna do it. That's all you do. <laughs> But before we do any of that, what I want to do is I want to head over to our iron patch because that's the one we're going to do first. So where is our Pam iron? Yeah, there it is. Okay, so we're going to head over to our iron patch and I want to do some, uh, this is going to be strange, but I want to do some dowsing um, because in order to set up Pam, you have to kind of tell it how big of an area you want it to mine. And the only way we would know is if we know where the iron is. So this looks like this is basically the center of the iron. So I'm going to mine straight down so that I know where the center of the iron is. Okay, yeah, so this is iron, and if I keep mining down, I should be in the center of it. Or am I on the edge of it? Actually, I might be on the edge of the iron. If so, that's really good, because that means that we have one of the edges of the iron discovered. Okay, and it looks like that right there is the bottom of the iron, so I want to try and find the other edge of the iron as well. I think I might mine on the top of it until I find where it is. Okay, mining straight down. It does look like this is still iron, and it looks like the iron goes all around me, so wow, this is a huge iron deposit. But I know at least that between these two holes, this is iron right here. So I can at least start right here and tell Pam to just mine straight about that far. That's good. 
Okay, so now that I at least have a decent idea of where the iron is, just vaguely, I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna go back into our ship, and I'm gonna go start by digging out a little area. So I know that this hole right here is kind of the start of the iron. I'm actually, oh, I don't have an ore detector on this, do I? <laughs> I should probably add one. I'm basically gonna do some uh, right-click mining to get down to where the iron actually is. So let's go ahead and do this so that the ship has an area that it can go. Okay, there we go. I've mined a little way down to where the iron is. So essentially we can tell this to go and mine from here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly on back to the, the, the area. And we're going to start setting this thing up. There we go. Connect that with number eight and then number nine. And let's add an ore detector before we do anything else. Because I, I feel like we need that. I don't know if that's required, but I feel like that is going to be something we want. All right, there's our ore detector, and let's get started with the actual auto mining part. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hop in here. We're going to go to our remote access to our, uh, not remote access. We're going to go to, we're going to find our remote control right here. We're going to control that. We're going to go into this, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my buttons that I've set up here that I can go up and down with. I'm going to click record path and set home. So once I click that, it starts recording. Now I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go ahead and unrecharge, disconnect, and we're going to get started. Okay, so basically we're going to fly our way to that area over there. Let's go ahead and do that. And in fact, our landing pad might be on the wrong side because I think this is going to take the exact path that we're using here. Um, which means if I put other ships in the way, it's kind of going to be a gamble if they run into each other, but it's going to be fine. Let's send it to its path right here. And we're just going to go in the general vicinity here. We're not going to go exactly where we want to go. We're just going to kind of go in the zip code. So maybe like right here. Okay, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my buttons here. I'm going to click apply again. And so that's good. Then I'm going to go down here and set up a mining job. So this one, I believe what I do, I click apply. And actually what I want to do as well is I want to go into info here. And I want to set the... Um, show sensors range. So it's actually going to show me where the sensor is seeing here. Uh, so I'm going to go down here and I'm going to change the width a little bit. I'm going to lower it by, yeah, maybe that much. That's probably gonna be fine. I'm going to change the height as well. I'm actually going to lower it a little bit because I know the iron's not that big. Maybe, maybe like that. It's going to end up getting a lot of ice. I think that's the problem and the depth a little bit more. So it's kind of not, not that big of an area. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it all the way down into this hole. And I don't know if it's actually going to know how to read this, but we're going to figure it out, okay? I cannot see a thing. Uh, I need a light. And I'm basically going to tell it, you know what? Okay, go right here. So what we do is we go back all the way up here to start new job, and then we press number three. Number three? Oh, wrong sensor direction. Oh, whoops. Okay, my sensor might be up to upside down or something. I need to go change this. It's my first time using PAM, okay? There's there's gonna be a couple of bugs that need to be ironed out. It's fine. Let's head over here. I brought some stuff for lights as well so I can add a couple here because we definitely need them. Bump the radius all the way up. And then finally, yeah, this sensor is facing the wrong direction apparently. So let's go ahead and remove that and re-add it. I don't know which way is the right direction though. That's the problem. Wrong sensor direction still. All right, let's see if it likes this. Yes, okay. When in doubt, use the old sensor block. It's a lot easier to find out which direction it's supposed to be facing. But anyway, it should now be doing the auto mining stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. It's gonna mine until it's full. And what I'm really concerned with is if it's gonna be able to get out of here, because it's kind of a, a tight area. But if it follows the path that we had to go in, then it should be fine. Maybe what I should have done is on the on the actual path I should have gone down here. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure yet how that's gonna work, but we're gonna we're gonna find out. How are you guys doing in here? Yeah, you okay, you guys I think are pretty much full. So let's see if it manages to get out of here on its own. It's running into the wall a little bit. Yeah, a lot of bit. Oh, you need to go up a little bit, friend. You need to go up a little bit. Maybe I can try to help it out a little bit here. I don't know, maybe it, it might be like backtracking directly to the path that I gave it earlier. I really don't know. But anyway, it, it's it's getting there. There we go. How you doing? Okay, he's got a full load and it looks like he's going to go back to the base now. All right. Now he did get a couple of boo-boos, um, unfortunately. Um, here, let's control X onto there so we're, we're locked onto him. Um, 
and let's try and repair these. I don't think I can, unfortunately, but it's probably fine. This is this is our first try, and uh, yeah. I think I'm gonna name these after supporters, by the way, um, because I have mentioned that uh, one of the supporter benefits is, is like names used in the game somehow, and I think this is a perfect way to do it. We're gonna have a couple of these drones flying around, and I think giving them supporter names would be kind of, kind of be cool to give them a little bit of a personality. So uh, yeah, we're gonna give our first one here in a second which might be a blessing and a curse. First one, but also the first one that might completely crash. Anyway, there it goes for its landing. It's gonna turn around and it's gonna land right there in half a second. Come on, you can do it. Don't be afraid. And there we go. Okay, so nothing's gonna happen now because it's gonna wait to unload and we don't have anything that's unloading it quite yet. But once we have that stuff all welded up, it will unload. So hooray, that's our first PAM Auto Miner setup and it did its job, it did it well, and it survived the trip with a couple of boo-boos. We're gonna get the other one set up and we're gonna get this base welded up in a second. We just need to um, grab some of this iron and process it because we're out of iron on the base. <laughs> All right, let's head on back to the main base and get the other ship built up. And we're also gonna bring in a load of materials so that we can weld up all this stuff. Uh, this has, I believe, done all the iron. So let's bring that home. We'll grab all this. There we go, 1.3K is not a terrible amount, but it'll at least last us a little bit for the remaining stuff we have on this ship. So let's bring it back home, get the other ship built up and we'll get going. All right, the second ship is built. It's very similar to the first one with just a couple of modifications. I've added a little bit more armor around the sides and stuff and a different color light, very slightly. Um, and I've also added all the materials that we're gonna need for the uh, connectors and stuff, the conveyors over at the other base. So let's go ahead and disconnect this and let's start flying it over. I'm gonna sit in my little seat again right here and <laughs> we're gonna get going. So we'll press K, go to remote access, small grid, and we're gonna rename these in, in a moment, but Let's fly our way over there this way. All right, signals on and let's go. We have six minutes of power, should be enough. We've got a landing pad over there waiting for us that'll charge us up. There we go, nice. Let's lock that, recharge that and perfect. Okay, so now we have two ships that look very similar but slightly different because we have some stuff in different positions but they're both, um, good at what they do, I suppose. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to get all this stuff welded up right here. We did bring all the stuff for this, so I'm going to go ahead and right click some of these here and grab all the materials. I think we should have all of it, but maybe we, we might be missing something. We'll see. Let's uh, grab everything we can and get to work. There's this one. I'm more concerned with this one because this one has a full load of iron right now that we need to get out of here. There's one, two, three and some of the sorter stuff need a little bit more from here there's the rest of the sorter there is that one and then finally we can get this last one in here right there and i think i'm actually missing oh no i'm not missing anything i thought i was okay well luckily that should mean that that is going to start pulling iron from there and refining it yes okay that's good that's uh, that's what we like to see um now what i want to do here before we do anything else is i want to go into my sorter and make sure that's configured uh, basically, the way I want this sorter to work is I want it to drain all for only ores. So anything that's an ore, uh, or also ice. I'll do ice as well. I don't know that ice counts as ore. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in separately. We're going to set this to whitelist, and we're going to set this to drain all. Now, that might make this thing immediately go off on its mission again. Um, unless it waits, it might actually wait for a full battery, I'm not sure. Or maybe it detects that these are broken and doesn't want to go without fixing them. I don't know. All right, since they're both here and it's hard to distinguish which one is which inside the menus, it's about time we name them so they're not just like small grid. Um, I said earlier we we're gonna name them after supporters. I'm gonna name them in two ways. We're gonna have the supporter name and we're gonna have the uh, the job that it does. So like uh, this one right here is an iron one. So this is gonna be like iron and then the supporter name that we're naming it after. I'm gonna go ahead and roll some random names here. So give me one second and we're gonna roll names. Okay, names have been rolled, and the first ship right here is going to be named after Trailblazer, who's one of our supporters. So let's go into info and name this one. I think we're just going to name it Pam Trailblazer so that we know it's a Pam ship and that Trailblazer is the name. And we're just going to color them based on what they're getting. So we're going to give this a nice red color. There we go. I think something like that will look quite nice, where it's kind of this red battered look with a little bit of gray accents in the center right there to show that this is an iron miner. So there's the, the Pam Trailblazer. And then this one over here, we're going to name after Macha, who's another supporter. Thank you, everybody, for your support. And if you want to have the chance of having a Pam ship named after you, um, that's the uh, tier two and above supporter 
things. So anyway, yeah, let's let's go in here and uh, name this. So this one is Pam Matya, and this one's gonna be mining um, pretty much the stuff over there, which is magnesium, nickel, and silicon. Uh, which is, oh gosh, are we gonna are we gonna make it all those colors? You know what? Why not? Why not? And there we go. There is the Pam Matya right there, which mines uh, nickel, silicon, and magnesium. It's got all the colors of the ship right there. This is a ridiculously colored ship, but I think it looks pretty cool. Hey, there's a parallax thing over there. Um, okay, let's um, let's actually get this one going to its position. I think we just want to bring it over there. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to record its path. I think we're going to go up, backwards, and then over. Uh, and then we'll tell it to mine out the area. Let me actually go over there real quick and find out what kind of area it is. Let me grab some some uh, markers here. Okay, so I kind of want to mine indiscriminately for this one right here. Uh, we have silicon right there, we have magnesium right there, and we have uh, nickel right here. So we kind of want to mine out this entire area. I could tell it to just kind of mine straight, and then I could give it maybe a, an ejector to eject any uh, ice that it gets. Wouldn't be a bad idea. You know what? I think we're going to do it lazily with this one, actually. Yeah, let's do that. All right, this ship right here now has little ice ejectors, which means we can technically tell it to mine indiscriminately and it'll be fine, probably. <laughs> okay, we do have to set up Pam on this one, so let's go ahead and get it set up. Check code. It's fine. Click OK. And it should now be doing its thing. Yep, perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and record path and set home. So I'm going to do that right there. I'm going to go back to here. Number eight to disconnect. I'm going to go up a little bit. I'm going to turn around, I think, this way. Then I'm going to go out this way before I do anything else. Then I'm going to start making my turn over to there. So I want to try and stay out of the way of other ships. So that's why I'm kind of making my turn a little bit farther out, being a little a little more deliberate with my pathing. So we're going to have our magnesium and our nickel and silicon over here. I'm going to tell this to go to about here. And we're going to basically tell it to mine out an entire area. Okay, so that's that's going to be our path right there. Let's uh, stop path recording. Now I want to set up a mining job, and I'm going to be really, really lazy with this one. I'm going to tell it to basically do this. I'm going to tell it to go down and just mine out this entire area. Because why not? We're going to see we're going to see how this works. It might work better. Uh, let's tell it that the width should be a little bit larger. So width go up like so. We'll tell it the depth should be a little bit less because look, the depth is, well, actually the depth is not that crazy. Finally tell it to start new job and we should be good. I'm just gonna kind of let this one kind of hang out and let's get the other one set up as well. I think I need to set this one uh, with another path. Um, although before we do, I wanna see, can I get this block welded? These two right here, one, two. Let's see if we have the materials for this. I don't think we do have the materials for it. So I'm gonna put it in production and see if we can make some of it. The only thing we're missing is those small steel tubes, which we should be able to get. I can honestly get them from these, and these ones we're not going to need right here. We're going to remove those. So that should give us enough small steel tubes for this. There we go. That should be enough and perfect. Okay, so I don't know how uh, how our, our um, Matya Miner over there is doing, but I think it's probably going to... It should be coming back any second now. I'm curious to see if it does. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mine this down. I don't think we're ever going to want this, and I can use the materials for sure. It gives us quite a few. There's a gravity generator in there as well. Oh, look at that. Do you see that little ship coming back? It looks like the Pam Matya ship is coming right back with a full load of the good stuff. Let's see. It's actually coming pretty quickly. This thing is this thing is zooming, but I guess I did zoom over there myself. So um, when we set the path for this one, we're going to need to make sure we go to the side instead of going back like that, because we never want these ships to cross paths and crash. It's dropping ice as it goes. This is hilarious. It's going to be empty by the time it gets here, isn't it? I think it is. I think it's probably full of mostly of ice because it never got it didn't get down to the ore quite yet. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's funny. There it goes. You know what I should do here? Maybe I should tell it not to deposit ice. I'll keep that thing on it, but uh, let's get our uh, connectors here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the sorters off so it doesn't drop ice. Because uh, it's honestly fine if we store it. Ah, there we go. So when he's empty with ores, he actually goes out and does his mission again. But it looks like we are going to have to make that connection to these so that it has some place to store this stuff. And then as for this guy, I don't know why this guy's not going. He, he doesn't want to do his path. He is empty, but I guess we have to reset that path. So let's go ahead and reset his path so that he knows where to go. 
We'll go ahead and record the path. Press number eight. We're gonna go up and we're gonna go out to the side this way here. And then we're gonna turn and head toward the uh, the iron. I think last time we went directly over the base, which is not really what we wanna do anyway. So let's head over this way and get in the general area. Then we can set back up his thing. And I think I might be a little lazy with this one as well. I don't care if it takes if they take back a bunch of ice. We're probably gonna just convert it to power or something. <laughs> I think we're just gonna set it up like this and tell it to start. Let it, <laughs> I'm just gonna let it do its thing. Um, meanwhile, the other one should be starting to come back pretty soon. Oh, look, hey, we have the Trailblazer coming back. I wonder if the Trailblazer's got any any iron on board. We'll have to wait and see. Let's see, is this empty? That'd be perfect if this is, so we can see if anything gets in here. There comes the Pam Trailblazer. Let's see if it lands properly. I think it probably will. It's been a little weird, but it should be fine. I don't think it'll ever crash into this guy. Let's see. And we have connection. Perfect. Do we have any iron, though? Any iron? I think it's only got nice, honestly. Yeah, I think for the first few trips they're only gonna get ice, but eventually they'll start getting ores. It's fine, it's automated. All we need to do is connect this up and they'll start storing all their ice in there and I think that will be fine. There's one of those, another one, and almost. We just need small steel tubes, displays, and interior plates. All right, Mr. Display, I now pronounce you delivered and that should send these guys on their way once the, uh, once the sorter does its magic. Oh, there we go. There goes one as I was refueling some stuff. Uh, this one decided to go off and this one should go pretty soon as well. Um, I don't know if it's still putting stuff in here or not. Oh, yep, there it goes. All right, the Pam Trailblazer and the Pam Machia are off on their missions. Oh, this is so cool. We now have some life to our base. We have things flying around. And speaking of life, there's one more thing that I want to add onto this. Okay, the last part of this mission, and perhaps one of the most important, is going to be ferrying the stuff home. And that's where we're going to make some sort of cool little ferry. Uh, and I kind of think we're going to put it here uh, so that it doesn't have to go over the, the base. Um, so let's find the middle block, and I think it's probably right there. Let's go ahead and remove that. And we're going to build off of that like we did for the other little stations. So this is gonna go up like that. Maybe I'll do three like so. We'll expand it out like that. And I'm gonna put a sorter on here because this is basically gonna grab all ingots and suck them up from the base and put them on top of this ship right here. So same thing we have as the setup over there. Put one of these right there and we'll fill out, hey, the Pam Trailblazer is back. And in fact, the, the Pam Machi is back too. They're both arriving at the same time, which is kind of cool. They just need to be careful not to cross each other's paths, which may one day be a problem. But right now is not a problem. I guess we'll find out if they if they crash into each other. While they're chilling around, I need to uh, let's go ahead and blueprint one of these, um, the the Pam Machia, and I'll blueprint the Pam um, Trailblazer as well, just so that if I ever want to auto make some of these, I can. And in fact, they shouldn't really stay connected for too long. They're probably just going to deposit their stuff and immediately go back out to another mining expedition. But anyway, let's continue building this out right here and make this a nice big uh, platform that they can land on. There we go, I think that looks quite nice and that's gonna be where our little ships can land. Maybe I'll remove this so it looks like that. I think that looks pretty good. We're gonna go back to the home base because we need to make an identical one of these at the home base that the, uh, that the thing can land at as well. So let's head on back over here and get that set up. Okay, so I'm thinking we use this area right here. This would be perfect for us because we already have the uh, the conveyors rather going all the way under there. So we could very easily bridge one out to go over to say like right here where we could land a ship. And it's kind of within our protection. It's just kind of outside the area. We can make it very minimalistic sort of. So let's, um, I'll go ahead and remove you. Then we'll immediately replace you. Just in case a reaver were to attack right now, we need to be able to, our to defend our, our base. I'm gonna flip you over there. And okay, perfect. Then using these blocks, we're just gonna go out a little bit. We're gonna probably have to do some digging here to uh, to dig out this area. Okay, so I'm thinking we're gonna go up right about there and then we're gonna have our connector right here, like so. We'll, uh, we'll dig up the area or we'll build up the area around it a little bit as well. So let's go ahead and get all this stuff welded up. All right, we should have everything else. Let's go ahead and put this stuff into here. And do I have a couple steel plates on me? If so, I have an idea of what we can do to make this look a little bit nice. I'm gonna do something like this. It's gonna come up like that, and then we're gonna have half blocks all around, so like so. 
And that'll be our sort of little landing pad. And maybe I'll throw a door right there. I don't, maybe not, I don't know. It, it's connected to the base, but maybe it doesn't have to be like perfectly connected with a door. Um, so anyway, yes, that is now connected, meaning we could get a ship to land here and go over there. Now we need to make our ship. What we're gonna do for this is we're only making a mule ship. It doesn't need any advanced auto mining functionality. So even though Pam is good for that sort of thing, we now have AI blocks that allow ships to uh, fly to and from little area. So we're going to make a, a, a ship using the new AI stuff. I'm going to go ahead and close this because we're going to be working inside. Anyway, let's get started on this ship. I'm going to go ahead and build up like this. And maybe I'll make this one look cool with a uh, one of those um, new thrusters. I'm talking about some of these guys. I think it'd look cool if I use some of these. So maybe I'll try, try and use some of those. It's kind of a cargo ship, so <laughs> I don't know how many of those we're going to want. But anyway, okay, we're going to do it like this. It's going to have two medium cargo containers like so. And this is also going to be a remote ship that we can remote control, but not fly in a cockpit, uh, which we, we seem to be doing a lot of those, I know, but I think they're cool, so I like them. Um, and we're going to do it like this. This is going to look a little strange, but we're <laughs> it's going to look cool too. All right, I'm thinking this is gonna look pretty cool if I put a thruster like that and then I have this arm kind of to the side. This is really similar to one of the one minute, 10 minutes, one hour challenge ships that I made. Uh, I realized that, but I think it looks really cool. Okay, I changed up the design a little bit and added a bunch of thrusters. So now we have a bunch of these tiny thrusters pretty much everywhere. Uh, and we have all of our directions handled at this point. So let's get all this stuff welded up and we'll find out what we need to add. We're gonna definitely need to add some AI blocks on here. Um, I don't know where we'll put them, but we'll find a spot. Let's get all this stuff in. All right, we ran out of iron, so we're gonna have to take a trip over to the base over there, the PLA military installation, but it's gonna give us a chance to see what our, um, what our PAM miners have done. So let's head on over there and see how much it's got. We've got a lot of iron there that we can ferry over by hand, which is why we're making the ferry, which we'll eventually use. But um, but for now, we're gonna have to ferry some over uh, by hand. Okay, checking it out. It looks like our PAM trailblazer is hanging out and our PAM Mati over here is, uh, is actually on its way, which is good to see that that's still going. The trailblazer, I hope, will go soon. Uh, oh, oh my gosh. Okay, this has been getting iron. This has been getting a lot of iron. I don't know if we've been getting anything else. The other one might not have actually reached its materials yet. Yeah, so it looks like we haven't been getting anything other than iron yet from the Pam Matia, but the Trailblazer has been blazing the trails big time uh, in terms of the iron that it's gathered. Let's bring home a load of our uh, iron that we've already refined at the refining outpost. And... Uh, and yeah, hopefully, I mean, I think the Pam, my, uh, the, the reason the, the Matya isn't doing very well right now is because we kind of said it lazily. We're like, okay, just mine out this entire area. So it doesn't really have a, a quick access to the ores. It'll eventually get there, but it might take a little bit for it to do so. Uh, whereas the Trailblazer, we were like, this is specifically where the ores are, have fun. <laughs> So um, either we can reconfigure the Matya if it still continues to knock any ores, or we can um, just wait and it'll eventually get there. Okay, let's head back inside. We're almost done with that with that mule ship that we're building. And in fact, you know what? I might name that one after a supporter too, because why not? That's an easy way to fulfill one of the uh, one of the perks that I offer. Okay, here we go. That should be, and one more, there we go. That should be all of the thrusters built up. So we now have a fully thrustered ship. Uh, now all we need to do is add our um, our antenna, our AI module, that sort of thing. So I think I'm gonna put the antenna on the back right here. Something like that. We're gonna put our remote control block on the front, facing the, uh, well, the front somewhere, like uh, maybe this right here. I think it actually needs to face this way. We'll place our camera block on the front like so. Uh, then what else do we need? We need some AI blocks. We're gonna want our AI flight, which is the move block that allows it to move around. Then we're gonna need some configuration stuff. And for that, I think I'm gonna actually remove a couple of these so that I can use the space a little bit more efficiently back here. Okay, I'm trying to remember how I did this before. I did this in the Pertam series, but it's a little bit complicated to get it to go from, from like connector to connector, but I think we can manage it with we're going to need four recorders. So left, right, yeah. So recorder one, recorder two, recorder three, and recorder four. Basically, we're gonna have a recorder for taking off, a recorder for landing at the other place, then a recorder for taking off from the other place, and finally a recorder for landing at the final place. Could I use the same recorder? Could I do this with only two recorders? That's the question. 
Okay, there we go. Everything's welded up. I'm still trying to get this wrapped around my head. I'll explain to you guys once I know what I'm doing. Basically, I have two recorders right now, and I'm planning to use one to take off, one to land, and then uh, I'm going to reverse them so that the one that was to land becomes the one to take off and vice versa. Then I've got an event controller back here, which hopefully is going to allow me to keep it landed until it's full and also it has empty cargo. That's the idea. Okay, I think I've got it now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this event controller here, which tells us when we can leave this base here. So when we're empty of materials, then we've got the, one of these ones, which is gonna tell us how to disconnect from the thing. This one is gonna tell us how to leave, basically the path that we wanna take to, uh, to, to get out of this area. Uh, then it's gonna switch over to this one, which is gonna tell us how to get into the other station. One of these two is gonna lock us onto the station. And this one's gonna tell us when we're full of materials and can leave. The other of these two is then going to uh, tell us how to disconnect from that station. It's going to reverse these coordinates and set this to the active one. So this is going to tell us how to leave. It's all uh, this. These coordinates are also going to be reversed. So this is going to tell us how to get in. Then this one's going to tell us how to disconnect. It's complicated, but it's basically a cycle where it goes like this. Boom, 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 back and forth over and over. And that's how it goes from point A to point B over and over. I think we've got this. Let's make sure we have everything on the ship and let's get it out in the wild. Uh, I'm gonna give it a little bit of design work real quick, make it look a little nicer. All right, with that, I'd say the ship is done. I've added some cool features, I think, that make it look kind of interesting. I added some wheels. I don't know why, I just I just figured wheels might look cool. But we have also rolled a supporter name and this is Jerfaso Maniac. Sorry if I butchered that. Um, one of our supporters on YouTube. If you wanna become a supporter, there's a join button down next to the subscribe button. Um, but yeah, the ship is now fully ready, I think. So let's go ahead and open this up and we're gonna have to get it configured, which is gonna be the hard part. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll we'll get it done um, and hopefully it works. I think it will. It, it'll be fine. Let's go ahead and disconnect it from the base here. And uh, and yeah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and blueprint it as well, just in case. We'll press K here, remote control this guy and we'll bring it out. What I want to do on the remote control is set up an AI flight move um, uh, swap. So I'm going to toggle this block on and off with this. So just in case I ever need to like control it, I can just go into here and immediately toggle off the AI so that I can be the one controlling it. Okay, let's, um, here. Oh my god, that's a scary looking ship. Wow. Okay. And bonk. <laughs> okay, let's switch to this. Go up a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and land it at the outpost right here. Go up a little bit. And down 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 there we go okay i've got everything named everything on the green side here is our base stuff and everything on the red side here is our uh outpost stuff i have made one small upgrade as well by adding an emotion controller on the front of this thing because why not Okay, it's time to start programming this stuff, but I'm gonna cut out most of this because it's gonna take a long time of just fiddling around with this. So uh, stand by and I'll be right back when all this is programmed and I'll show you how it works. Okay, in case you've never done any of the uh, the flight recording stuff, I'm gonna show you how it's done real quick. So we're gonna go into our recorder uh, right here and we're gonna do a record option right here. So I'm gonna click record and then it's now recording our waypoints. It's very similar to how PAM works. It records basically what we do. So I'm actually gonna tell it to go about this high because I want it to go quite high. And then I'm gonna tell it to turn over here and take this path right here. Now, once I'm about here, I'm gonna go ahead and go inside this. There we go, you'll see it recorded a bunch of waypoints here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop that right there. And I'm gonna tell it that that's, that's fine for the waypoints. Next, I'm gonna go over to our other base and I'm gonna record the way down. So I don't need to record the entire way over there because it can go from point A to point B. So it can go from that last waypoint to the first waypoint of this one here all by itself. It doesn't need to do anything special. Now, if I wanted to be more granular, I could of course tell it exactly how to get here and it would it would record all those waypoints but i don't really want to do that so we'll get it to come in right to about there then i'm going to go into our recorders i'm going to go to our outpost recorder and i'm going to tell it to uh record here so it's going to start recording and i'm going to tell it exactly how to get into this landing pad here it's going to follow my um my example i don't i do not want it to cross the path of those other two ones the pam miners over there you'll see them kind of chilling uh, oh, I did not actually finish building this. Okay, well, it's still recording. You know what? Well, <laughs> I can just let it chill here, and I don't think it's recording, uh, because I'm not moving. 
But let me let me finish up the building of this, and then we'll we'll finish up the recording steps there. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, there we are. All right, and let's finish the last little bit of recording here. I'm gonna go into remote access and make sure I can see what's going on here. So it should be recording this. I'd like it to land perfectly. Okay, and then I'm gonna tell it to stop recording right there. Outpost, you can see it's got 18 waypoints. I'm gonna tell it to stop right there. Okay, perfect. And now I think that should be everything set up. All right, I think I've got all of them set up now. Look how happy he is. I think I've got all of them set up now. It was a bit of a pain, but we had to also add two new recorders. So I realized that having these recorders and then reversing them wouldn't really work because I'd still need to uh, to activate the appropriate um, takeoff or landing timer or activate the next one. It, it was complicated. So you know what? Instead, we just added another one. So we have one for base uh, takeoff, one for base landing, one for outpost takeoff, and one for outpost landing. And that is... <laughs> That's, that's the final way we're going to do it. It's the easy way. Okay, finally what I need to do is I need to go in here and make sure everything's configured. So let me go back into my timers or my... Let me actually do the recorders first. All right, it's taken an absolute age, but I think I finally got it where I want it. So we have all the recording done there. It, it, it can do its path. We also have all the timers set up and everything. So now I believe if I were to go in here and I were to turn on my event... Uh, whoops, my event controllers... For the base, let's go ahead and turn you on and see if you do the thing. Okay, so are you gonna... Oh, I don't think this triggers... Yeah, I don't think this triggers unless... Um, unless the cargo becomes that. Like, it had to already be full. Okay, so what I might add then for our Mark 4 version of this is a button that automatically triggers the takeoff or the landing sequence. So let me get a button. Okay, so now I've got these buttons. If I want them to just go, I just press these buttons and they will do the thing. So if I press this, it should immediately... Wait, wait a few seconds. And then it should start the process. Excuse me, sir. You're, you're doing the wrong thing. Oh, wait. No, okay, no, it's doing it. Good. I'm gonna go ahead and blueprint it as well uh, while, while we're watching it here, just because I have the... This is the Mark IV version, or the Mark III version, rather. MK3. Now, what I don't know what it's doing is what it's doing. I, I don't know. I don't know what it's doing right now. I think maybe it's trying. Oh, I know what it's doing. It's trying to get from point eight or from each waypoint to each waypoint. Ah, yes. Okay. So what I'm gonna do here? Let me let me pop in here. Remote access. You. Boom. Stop. Okay. I need to remove some waypoints because we have a problem with that. <laughs> Okay, what I'm doing is because this thing was having a lot of trouble, I'm going through and I'm cleaning up these waypoints and I'm deleting the ones that I don't want. So essentially what you can do here is you can, if you go into your info and select show AI functions on like that, then you go into your recorder right here and check both of these things right here and then select all of yours. You can actually see the paths on your thing. So that's like waypoint nine, that's waypoint 12. We have waypoint one, four, seven. So I've been deleting unnecessary waypoints so that we have less waypoints going in. Um, and that should make it a little bit easier. I'm gonna go over to the other side as well and delete some unnecessary waypoints over there also. Um, because when you're recording the, the flight path, it adds a bunch of waypoints that you might not need. And you can of course change the frequency of it adding waypoints, but uh, I did not. <laughs> I did not do that. So as a result, I got a lot of waypoints. All right, I've successfully gone through and cleaned up a bunch of the waypoints, so now it should work a little bit better. But what we can do is we can go into here, go into our timers, find our switch timer here that brings us from base to outpost. And I should be able to trigger that now. And it will think for a second. Uh, it'll, it'll, think, it'll think for a second. There we go. Okay, I had to trigger it now again, but now it's doing it. So uh, we're going to have to let it chill for a second. Here, I can pop out. And I have my seat up there just so that it was easier to uh, mess around with everything. But now it should kind of do its thing. It should land. I'm going to go grab some more oxygen from the base here. We're going to let it do its thing, which is it's the first time it's doing this. So that's a little risky of me, but I need oxygen because I'm a human being. There we go. There's our oxygen. And here comes the Jerfaso maniac uh, coming in for a landing. Hopefully, hopefully it works. Now, of course, once it gets there, it's not really going to be able to do anything because we don't have anything hooked up yet. We'll have to add some sort of like sorter to throw things into the ship or something like that. Um, but at least for now, we're just going to let it kind of where the heck are you going? That's not that's not what I you know what? OK, if, if you can make it there, I'm fine with you taking weird. It's probably got collision avoidance turned on. That's probably what's going on. Let me. 
Yeah, that's definitely what's going on. Because it's seeing this grid and it's being like, oh, I don't want to touch it. I'm scared. Let's go into here. Let's grab our Drafaso Maniac here. Okay. AI flight move. We're going to turn off collision avoidance. It's going to put everything offline. That's not good. Um, uh, batteries. Batteries. I need you to turn on auto. There we go. Nope. Please. Thank you. Okay. Remote access. Control me, please. Oh, okay. Okay. That was a little bit scary, but I think we finally got it. Let's head back over here and let's let it try one more time. Um, it's got collision avoidance turned off, which is risky, of course, but uh, we should be able to get it going now. All right, here it comes. Come on, coming in for a landing and locked. Perfect. Okay, so now what I should be able to do is, since we're at this base, I should be able to tell it to get out of here. Go on, get. Let's see if it does it. It's going to disconnect from here and away it goes. What's that? That's still the parallax arrowhead. I don't know if that's something that's crashed. It's. It looks like it's flying, so it might be a little base or something. But this should be heading on over to the main base. I guess we'll find out. Here, let's let's hop on and we'll, we'll uh, go for a ride. I'll stand on this the entire time, and we'll go on a, uh, a, a sped up ride. There you go. Enjoy. And there we go. Just like that, we are back. And what is that? That's an Incon hired gun behind it. Just like that, we're back and everything is looking good. The, um, uh, it seems like when this thing's empty though, it's not gonna be able to go on its own. It's gonna have a little bit of trouble. Um, but luckily that shouldn't be an issue because it should always stay there until it's full. And when it gets here, it should always be full and then be able to empty out. So then the event controller uh, right here would trigger. But anyway, I don't think we need this anymore. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I need to go back over to that base and set up some actual, what am I looking at? Why is it green over there? Is that the path that we're looking at? I think that might be. Um, I need to go back over there and set up the uh, the containers. So I'm gonna do that. Let me grab some some materials, and we'll we'll go ahead and do that. While we're going over, I'm gonna tell him to go on over as well. He's gonna take a second, and then he's gonna get his butt over there. Just give it a second, and it should. Yeah. Okay. It's a little weird that it turns around right there. That might lead to some trouble. But anyway, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna leave it to its own devices and head on over here. So as a temporary solution, because by now I'm sure the episode is horrendously long, probably the longest episode we've ever seen, I'm going to go ahead, okay, we already have a sorter right there. I'm going to bring this uh, this way with one of these. And what do we want to connect this to? Um, we could maybe connect it, I don't know if we can connect it there. So if I remove this, yes, okay, we do have a conveyor down here that we can use. So let's grab our, uh, our little pipes and we'll go out like this. This is gonna come, I guess we'll go this way actually. We'll turn in this way and we will go like that. Okay, so we need stuff to fill out all of these. Now we've got most of the sorter done. And then of course we're out of stuff for everything else. I'm curious actually, what do we have in here? Cause I think those guys are probably full, which is probably why they're not going to mine. If I look in here, we have an insane amount of ice. We have a lot of iron. Uh, in fact, what, 38k iron? What's in the refinery? Another 133k iron. So this guy's getting really good iron. We just have a lot of ice, which we could, of course, deposit. We could throw it out, or we could burn it into fuel, or something like that. But uh, for now, it's just gonna sit there. The Pam guys are gonna be stuck until we figure out what we wanna do with the ice. Oh, hey, he's here. I was wondering where he was. <laughs> I was looking around like, where's our guy? No, he actually made it all the way here. So that's good. We now know that that he's able to make it all the way here in one piece, which is really good to know. Okay, the only thing we could not get were the computers. So let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna have to run back to the base real quick so we can grab some of those because we don't unfortunately have any um, silicon on board the, uh, the little outpost over there. So let's head on back. For the final time in this episode, this this episode, I mean, I've been recording for probably four hours by now. It's a long one for sure, but you know what? It's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Alrighty, there we go. There's our conveyor and let's go ahead and I'm going to call this the conveyor sorter loader. And we're going to go ahead and whitelist all ingots. Add that there. 
And we are going to send it on its way. Drain all. Put them in there. So now, once we look at this, this cargo here, which, uh, yep, we can right here, we should be able to see that anything on board this ship. Yeah, so it's filling this stuff up pretty quickly. I don't know if it's going to be able to fill up all of it, but that should be fine. The problem is it can't fill up all of it, and since it can't fill up all of it, this can't go home. So what I might do is I might, for now, go into my event controller, and I might tell this that while we're at the outpost, I don't want it to... I'm fine with it going more than 50%. If they're all... if they're 50%, then it's... it's okay. Now, I still don't know if this is going to work, but I can at least tell it to... to head off on its merry way. Um, and there it goes. <laughs> I don't know why it's now showing me the path. It took me long enough to, to see the path before. In fact, what I should do is I should remove... Yeah, I should remove... I'll clean this up off camera, because there's there's some cleanup that can definitely be done. Adding a waypoint like there and removing the rest of them, like seven there, there for the takeoff, would be perfect. So, um, but anyway, yeah, I think that is where we're going to end the episode, actually. Um, we did a lot in this episode. This was the episode of AI and of Pam. We have two Pam miners here. We have the Pam Trailblazer and the Pam Matya. Uh, these are the mining ships that go and, re and mine iron and supposedly... <laughs> some other stuff that's not ice respectively um and of course we have the uh the the transport um the ai drafaso maniac transport which is going to go take things back and forth it's the ferry it's the one that takes things back and forth um but anyway let me know what you guys think of this episode because this one's really um experimental for me i don't often mess with uh pam and ai stuff so uh let me know what you think about this and if you think there's stuff that could be done a little bit better and there he goes off to reach the base. Um, let me know if you need any clarification on any of the things that we did in the comments. I'll be happy to explain. And uh, yeah, anything else you, uh, you'd you like to say, post those down in the comments. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. If you'd like to join the channel, becoming a member, or if you'd like to join the Discord, or if you'd like to uh, join the Patreon, there's links to that down below in the description. And with that, I will see you all in the next episode of Space Engineers Survival.